guys, it's a proud cat lover. Today I'm going to be making a hissing cockroach video, but I wanted to go ahead and update you guys real quick on just a few of the caterpillars. So I will say real quick, I only had three Viceroy butterfly caterpillars that pupated. Um, none of the others made it. I'm not really sure if the leaves that I gave them from a cottonwood tree across the street killed them. I don't know if it had been treated with anything. It was the neighbor's tree, so I don't know. Um, I think that's what ended up killing them because before they were switched to the cotton when they were on the willow, they were doing just fine. And once they got switched, they were having problems and acting sick. And by the time I'd gone out to the lake and gotten some cottonwood leaves that I'd found out there and given them to them, it was too late and I wasn't able to save the others. Um, so it is kind of sad, but I do have three that are in their cocoons right now. There was a fourth one. It was trying to pupate, and it just didn't end up making it. Like, it just is still hanging there as a caterpillar, and it ended up passing away, which was kind of sad. Um, so, the main update of this entire video, um, <laughs> is the fact that I found a whole bunch of more of those little black caterpillars. So, come to find out, these are called Silvery Checker Spot Butterflies. They're little tiny orange and black butterflies that you see a lot in the, um... I guess you could say early summer to fall time period. There are different kinds you can start seeing in the spring, but you're more or less going to see the uh, blue azures and different little tiny blue and purple butterflies more in the spring than you will these guys. Um, but I had started running out of sunflower leaves because sun my sunflowers really don't have a lot of leaves. They have big ones and they only have a few. Instead of having a lot of small ones, they have a few big ones. So I went out to my garden because I have three different um, coneflower or echinacea f uh, plants and there's tons of leaves on those and I'd heard that these caterpillars can also eat on echinacea or coneflower leaves so I go th out there I go out there and I find a gajillion more caterpillars already at my house I didn't I shouldn't have even grabbed these ones because now I'm gonna have so many so in here you can see I have the really big ones you can kind of see Blossom literally thinks he needs to be in my way for this entire thing. For some reason, he hasn't cared about me at all until I started videoing. But anyway, all the big caterpillars are in here. You can see their size is quite large. They're not close to pupating just yet. They're almost there. But um, they're the really big ones. And there's probably at least about 30 or 40 of those. And then I found a whole bunch of tiny ones to add to my already existing colony of tiny caterpillars. So I just cleaned this container. So that's why a whole bunch are still gathered on a few leaves. But you can see these guys have gotten a lot bigger. I don't really think I've had any casualties just because I've been keeping a lot of food in here. So you can see there's quite a bit. There's probably at least 10 or 12 leaves in here. So I'm making sure that they don't have to be fed every day because I supply a lot of food. These guys, on the other hand, I have to change their leaves every day just because be being that this is an air net type, um, the leaves dry out really quick. So because these are in a confined space with just a few small holes, um, their leaves can stay good for two days. Three days would probably be pushing it, and normally the food would be gone by then. Um... So, but I just wanted to update you guys on the caterpillars. I'll also show you this other new addition real quick, and then we'll get to the hissing cockroaches. So my other new caterpillar I found, I'm trying to think, I found at a bike path that's near our lake, and you can kind of see it right there. But this apparently is called a unexpected Cynthia moth or something like that, according to some people in my butterfly and moth group. And it's a little orange and orange caterpillar with grayish black poofs of hair. And it's actually grown quite a bit since I first found it because it was pretty small. But it has a milkweed leaf in there. Luckily I grow milkweed at my house because of the fact that this is a strictly milkweed only caterpillar. Like it can't eat anything else. Um, or at least that's what the website with the information says. So this is my other new one. And it's going to turn into a really pretty, like, whitish cream moth with a few, like, orangish yellow stripes. Um, it won't be stripes on the wings. It's more kind of like borders. And then I think there might be a few more little patterns on it. It's not like it's an amazing, beautiful moth, but it still is really pretty. 
So now we'll move on to the hissing cockroaches. Okay guys, so my hissing cockroach colony, I suppose you could say it's not a real big colony, but I'm just going to call it that because I have a bunch. <laughs> it's under 75, I do know that, just because um, I have had a few pass away, just because of, you know, oh wait, I have one other place I have hissing cockroaches, but I'll show these ones to you first. So first we're going to see the new additions. I have four new females. Um, there's a person in my hissing cockroach group that was looking to trade these females for a male because they were gravid and she really didn't want babies. She had already gotten some babies from them and she had um, given them to a person. As far as I'm aware, that's what she had said in the group. And so she asked me to take the females so that she could get a male. And so I had, of course, some male babies in here. I gave her one that was a little bit bigger than this one here. This guy's around nine months old, and hers was its sibling. So I'm going to see. I'm assuming that all of the girls. Oh, I do see one right there. It's hiding. You can see its antennas. So I do see one of the girls there. I'm going to try to move the plants and see if. I can show them to you without them running off. Oh wait, this is the hunchback baby. See, this is what I was worried would happen eventually. So this baby is slightly deformed because of inbreeding, I'm sure. So T-Rex was, of course, my only surviving female's father. And he, of course, bred with his daughters. Um, so obviously I can't really stop that from happening because back then I didn't have these tanks set up so I could have just had him in here with the other boys but um before that I didn't have that set up so this is probably like the f hmm, third or fourth batch of babies from this last surviving female that I have and so this one probably was from the second batch just because it's probably around five months old somewhere in there four or five months old so this one was probably from the second or third batch of babies and it already is kind of showing deformity. So if it lives, it's just going to have to be a pet only. Depending on its gender, it definitely will have to be separated right away. So all the males are in here and all the females are in here. I did accidentally um, sex one of the females wrong and it was in here. I don't know if it's old enough to have babies yet because it's not very much bigger than this guy. But just in case, it is in a container with small mesh. So if it were to have babies somehow, um, the babies would not be ex able to escape this tank. But anyway, being that that was, okay, I do see one of the females. She's back here, so she might run. Oh, she's going to hiss for us. Now, this might not be one of the new ones, because that could be my female that I already have. Let me see. Okay, there she is. So the only way to tell is for me to pick it up. Okay, so this female is one of the new ones. Only can tell that just because of the way it looks. Oh, come here. Because... Oops, stop having a fit and hold still. See how this has orange, I mean auburn, in like a claw shape? My female doesn't have that, so this is one of the new girls. My female is a really pretty kind of amber color like this on her head. So this is one of the new girls. As you can see, she's definitely pregnant. Whoop. Let me get her back in here because she's having a fit. I don't think this person handled their hissing cockroaches very much because they are super jumpy. Let me see if I can get this back in here without squishing anybody. Okay. Let's see who else I can find. So they're most likely going to be in the hot height, I think. Let me lift up this one and make sure. Yeah. So let me pause this and investigate real quick. Okay, so it does look like we've got the other girls in here. You can see them. 
One of them is that dark amber color. My girl's in there. She is the really big one behind the dark colored one. And then the other new one is in there too. I don't really know if I want to mess with them. Because I don't want to stress them out so much that uh, they abort the babies. But let me see if I can get my camera closer. Okay. So you can kind of see in there a little bit. You can see this very big girl. You can see my girl, which is... Actually, that might not be my girl. I can't tell. That fat one there might be her. That one looks like it's sleeping because it has its antennas back and that's normally what they do when they sleep. I will say real quick that the names of them, the dark one is Coco. The, uh, and then the three orange ones, just because you really can't tell them apart very easily, are Bloom, Sky, and, uh, Tangerine. Those are the three names I gave the girls. And of course, I'm pretty sure it's either Caramel or Mocha that is my female that's left out of the three girls because... One of, well, actually, a couple of them have passed away this year so far. So, just I'm assuming from old age. And normally, females that breed don't live as long as females that are just pets. I will say that real quick, because most hissing cockroaches should live to be around f uh, three to four, maybe five years old. And my girls, I think, might be like two. But I can tell you right now, males are most of the time going to live longer um, especially if, them, if they're by themselves and if they're healthy, just because of the fact that females are having babies, so it pretty much kind of wears on their body, wears down their body and stuff, and so they don't normally live as long. Now, there might be some breeder females out there that live a long time. I personally don't have any. <laughs> like, Big Mama, I think, lived to be three. I think is how old she was, and T-Rex was almost four years old, because he lived a little bit longer than her. Um, I'm not going to mess with opening this one up because I have this on here and that to keep the cockroaches from getting out. Um, <laughs> you can see that, uh, let me turn this off real quick. Let me see if you'll be able to see them or not because they always hide under the lip of this and they've kind of receded now because I was flashing like, oh, well you can see them through here. Do you see their bodies? <coughs> ah. This here, this orange, that's one roach. Here's another one. They get under the lip of this container here and they hide in there for some reason. They also have like this little secret tunnel that they have under the food dish. Actually looks like there's one in there right now. This black thing right there. Yeah, you see an antenna moving? That must be one of the bigger females. And there's some males in here. Now they're all hiding under those leaves back there. So I really can't show you very many of them. But that is the three main bunches. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this light off. I use my slime containers to hold the top down so that the roaches can't push this and escape. So anyway, we'll go visit the last area where I have roaches. And then we'll be done with our little update. Okay, so here on the rack system is my last container now these are ones that are too young to be able to tell the gender so let me move this plant real quick okay so you can see one of them is over here actually it looks like there's two there and they have a dish with romaine lettuce and carrots there always seems to be some hiding up here at the top and there's like a bunch of poop on there Oh, there's actually more than a few there. You can see one of them went running. Here's another one. They're, oh, they pretty much probably could be big enough to be sexed and put in with the others. Um, when it comes to males, I'm letting them get as big as they can in here before moving them over because some of the bigger males might bully them and not let them have as much food. But anyway, guys, that's my little update on the hissing cockroaches. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and have a good rest of your night.